Good. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Really happy to see the amazing number of participants for this webinar. I did not expect so many people, so it's, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm Marion Louveau. I'm working at the Pasteur Institute in Paris in the IC team at uh, the Bioimage Analysis Unit. And um, today's webinar is about bioimage analysis with IC. Uh, the link to the slides is on the first page here. You can also find it in the chat and they are available on my GitHub account also. Um, so I will first give a, a brief introduction of uh, three slides to explain what I will um, uh, talk about during the rest uh, of the talk. So I will um, introduce IC, uh, which is a bioimage analysis software and has this particular feature to uh, really provide a platform to bridge people uh, across disciplines. I will then focus on the protocols that are a specific feature of IC and that allow me to make quantitative analysis, uh, even if you don't know how to program. And then I will uh, explain you why the community around IC is so important and encourage you to get involved. So uh, to um, keep on going with the introduction, uh, in the first part, I'm going to introduce uh, IC as a bioimage analysis software. It uh, has a rich graphical interface. I will come back to it later and explain the different uh, panels that you see here. Um, it allows to perform quantitative analysis in a reproducible manner, even without programming knowledge. So here, for instance, you see the results of some analysis. I will come back to, here, to this uh, afterwards, and uh, you can have some control on this. But you also have the feature that is called protocol that I will uh, talk about in the part two. You can uh, get the latest image analysis and computer vision algorithm. I will explain how IC was conceived at the origin and um, what uh, led to the construction of the software. And uh, it's a tool that allows to easily share bioimage analysis workflows uh, with the very diverse bioimage analysis community, which is composed of biologists, bioimage analysts, but also developer and image analysis uh, and computer vision researchers. In the second part, I'm going to explain you a feature of IC, which is called protocols. And this is what you see here in the middle of the screen, uh, this series of blocks that are linked together. I will show how it, it uh, allows to make some automated processing uh, of the image, even if you don't have any programming knowledge. I will also explain that uh, it has some flexibility and a lot to go further if you need to do complex tasks. So it's uh, uh, quite customiz customizable. And I will also uh, enhance the importance of transparency and reproducibility, which is uh, possible with this kind of features. And in the last part, I will uh, talk about the community around IC. Um, IC has been a community effort, although it started in one lab. Uh, I will talk about the different resources that exist around IC, how you can communicate about these resources and how you can share your knowledge and help the others. So uh, during the webinar, I will ask you some questions. I prepared uh, four polls. Uh, the first one is uh, to know a bit more about you. So you already answered some question when registering, but here the idea is to share the results with all the participants and to kind of introduce yourself to each to the others. So I'm interested in knowing if you do image analysis for yourself only for your own project, or if you're doing it for the others only, or if you're doing both. And I'm also interested if you know IC or if you never heard of, of it, if you have been using it a bit or a lot. Yeah, and we can see the results. So it looks like most of you are doing image analysis both for themselves and for the others. And most of you also heard about IC but never used it. So that's, that's a good point. Um, I'm going to I'm going to introduce you uh, to IC. So I'm really happy to see this result. Uh, corresponds to the 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 
audience I, I targeted. Uh, in the outline, uh, I will, as I said, talk uh, about IC first, then about the protocols, and then about the community. So let's get started with IC. At the origin, this is a project that was started at the uh, Pasteur Institute in the Bioimage Analysis Unit. Uh, so the project leader uh, was and is still uh, Jean-Christophe Olivier Marin and the original kernel developers of IC are uh, Fabrice de Chaumont, Alexandre Dufour, and Stéphane Dallanger. So it um, was um, uh, materialized by a publication in 2012. And anytime you're using IC, I will come back to this, you should cite this, uh, uh, this publication. Um, the original aims of IC, and this is still true today, was first to bring together biologists, bioimage analysts, developers, and uh, image analysis researchers. So the bioimage analysis unit is located at the Pasteur Institute, which is a biology institute. And uh, the particularity of this unit is to be composed of uh, image analysis and computer vision researchers that are developing a new algorithm in image analysis. The problem was how to communicate these tools to the biologist and how to uh, share uh, these resources. So this was the first point of creating IC. Then, of course, this is linked uh, with the first one. Uh, the idea was also to give access for, uh, to state-of-the-art methods, but also to uh, the cutting-edge solutions that they were developing for their own research. And the third point was also to promote and to facilitate the use of quantitative approaches and reproducibility in image analysis, in the bioimage analysis community. So these are the foundation of the IC software. I wanted to add some fun facts on these uh, slides uh, because I don't know if you know about it, but IC's name is a play on word actually. It both means IC and ICY, like the letter, if you spelled it. And as I had uh, many questions about the IC logo, it's actually a microscope lens. So with this, now I will go back a bit more into the details of the graphical user interface of IC. It's a, it's a unified graphical interface that is all in one block and that has um, a consistent design uh, over different panels and the different plugins. It's mainly uh, composed of three blocks. So this uh, ribbon menu, this viewer here, and the side pane. So now I'm going to detail a bit more uh, the viewer and the side pane. Before I keep on going with this, I would like to make a note about the images I will use during this presentation. They are all published on Zenodo. I put the link here, they have a DOI, so you can cite them. And the first image is uh, from um, a colleague of mine, Stéphane Verger, and it's a shoot apical meristem. So it's actually the, the structure that give uh, the future of flowers of the plants. So, in uh, the side pane, you have some options to display uh, the image. So the canvas first, uh, just the zoom and the rotation of the image. The second part is about the histogram. You can adjust uh, contrast and brightness. You can change the lats also. So all these options are uh, directly at your fingertips. And the last part is the sequence property that you can edit here if they, the metadata were not correctly imported. Uh, in the viewer option, you can, of course, uh, look at the image in 2D. This one is a 3D stack, so you have the Z coordinates here and the X, Y coordinates and the pixel value here. But you can also look at the orthogonal views. So this is a dome structure with here the flower, and you see the two orthogonal profiles. We, can, we cannot see the cross here. But it's it's there, um, and uh, you can also see uh, the, the 3D stack in and 3D with uh, the the VTK, VTK uh, library. So I will come back to this 3D view uh, later and introduce you to a plugin that does the rotation in 3D of the images. I, before that, I want to show you some nice feature of IC. Uh, you can synchronize a window. Uh, it's um, particularly interesting when you want to compare two channels. 
uh, in uh, the upper uh, left corner of the viewer, you have this lock. So you can select this one on the group one and for the second window also the lock of the group one and this will synchronize this to window. So I put some videos on the IC bioimaging YouTube channel. Um, so you can find these videos afterwards. You can also find them in the presentation. And with this, I'm showing to you the behavior of the synchronization. So here you see if you're zooming in on out, if you're moving in X and Y, uh, U uh, or Z, um, all the, the behavior of the windows are synchronized. You can also draw some arrow eyes and they will appear on both windows. So now, uh, as I talked about arrow eyes, uh, these are the regions of interest. This is the objects that you obtain uh, after segmentation or that you draw manually yourself. Um, you can display the results. Uh, so you can display this arrow eyes uh, using the second tab uh, called arrow eye in the site panel. Here uh, to obtain this image, I did the segmentation with HKMins. Uh, then I ordered the arrow eyes on the area. So you can actually click on all the tabs here to order according to a certain parameter. And then you can color the rows uh, that are uh, below a certain threshold in a color and the other ones in another color, et cetera. So you can visualize the, your results uh, in the interface. You can also uh, toggle all the arrow eyes with this overlay button or toggle them one by one. And finally, you can export these results. So you have the option here to select first the colon you want to display here and then the colon you want to export as um, Excel file or CSV. So this led me also the occasion to introduce the second data set that I will use uh, for this presentation. It's also on Zenodo. These are different types of images. It's, uh, I think, cells that are from a colleague of mine, uh, Jessica Quintin. And again, it has a DOI, so you can cite them. Um, now I want to move on uh, more to the heart of IC, so the code. Uh, so first, IC is open source. It's um, Java-based, and it's composed of a kernel and uh, sets of plugins. So the kernel is really the heart of the application. This is what I was talking about uh, at the beginning when I was referring to the origin of uh, IC. It is what defines the graphical interface and also how the images are loaded, how they're saved, uh, what are the visualization options and the behavior of the re regions of interest. So as this is open source, anyone can contribute, but in practice, uh, there is a limited number of contributors because it's quite technical. So it mainly relies on the shoulders of the ICT. Then there is the plugins, and plugins are uh, small modules that connect to the kernel and that can add one or several functionality. So for instance, a segmentation algorithm or a registration method, et cetera. And here, again, anyone can contribute, and the number of uh, contributors is quite high because it's, it's easier to connect these modules, and that's actually a really, really nice feature of IC. When you download IC from the IC web website, what you get is a kernel and a selection of plugins. Then you can get extra plugins um, uh, as uh, you can download them uh, later or you can add them manually. If you want to download them, uh, you gather, go directly into the search bar of um, the IC interface and you start typing the name of the plugin or some keywords. So for instance, segmentation. You will see two types of plugins, the one that are installed, so they are installed locally on your computer, and the one that are online, it means that they are stored on the IC website. If you click on one of them, uh, of one of these online plugins, it will uh, download it from the internet. You can also uh, click, right click on the plugin, and this will direct you to the online documentation of the plugin. 
So this is valid only for plugins that are uh, uh, referenced online on the IC website. We encourage developers to, have, to add their plugins to the IC uh, online repository, but there is no obligation to do so. So you might also come across plugins that are on the website of someone else, and then you have to follow their instruction to install this particular plugin. Um, I would like to highlight some plugins. I don't have time to go through them all because there is more than 400 uh, that are uh, on our website. Uh, I selected for the spot detector because it's one of the oldest one and it's a very uh, useful one and it's often used in publications. It, um, uh, it allows to count spots uh, structure. So you see this uh, small blue and red granules. And uh, this is a publication from 2020. And uh, here, this is the raw data. And they uh, show here uh, the ROI. So if you see these uh, small red spots, these are the regions of interest for um, uh, one of the two types of spots. So I encourage you to go back to this publication and look more into detail how they use the spot detector. They use it to count the number of spots for both categories in a certain region of interest. Then we can also, I can also highlight you the segmentation with active contour. So active contour is um, a different method than the HK means I was uh, mentioning before. It's actually well suited when you have uh, cells with this kind of um, uh, convoluted shapes and when uh, the border is a bit less well defined. And uh, once, once you have done this, for instance, here on this amoeba, uh, the segmentation was done with the active contour, you can track them with the track manager. And here I'm showing this video because this little amoeba is going really close to this big one. And yet the, track, uh, the tracking algorithm is able to separate them to the, the two of them. Uh, last part is the uh, uh, last plugin I want to highlight here is the BioFlow plugin. It allows to do intracellular flow analysis. Here it's acting uh, again into Amoeba and uh, to also connect it to some uh, mechanical modeling. So it's quite an uh, advanced plugin, but it can be useful uh, for some cases. Um, so the final plugin I want to introduce is uh, really simple, but yet really often used in publications. Uh, it's the 3D rotation plugin. It allows to um, acquire um, rotated view of uh, your uh, 3D sample. Um, and here, because the window is really simple, this allow me to introduce the plugin interface. So you have one or several parameters here. Usually uh, you have um, a help button that will explain you what the parameter is made for. And then below you have always this, or almost always uh, this uh, feature. So first, um, the run button, and you can also pause it. You will see the progress in the progress bar, and then you can save the parameter and load them. So here you would only save five, which is not super uh, useful, but in some plugins you may have 10 parameters and then it makes sense to save them for later to redo the analysis. And the last button uh, links you to the online documentation of this plugin. So it will link you actually to this web page. Uh, besides plugin, you can write protocols. So protocols are a combination of blocks. I will uh, show you more in details in the second part, how to make a protocol. Some of these blocks correspond to the plugin. So this one is the block corresponding to the spot detector plugin I mentioned earlier. And other blocks are for intermediate steps, like uh, extracting a channel or um, modifying the ROIs or computing some features. So here I am showing this part protocol in particular because it has been published in 2017 and they uh, published it also on our website. So you can download it and reuse it. You reuse it. Um, to conclude on this part, I wanted to mention that IC is connected with other tools. 
um, the list here is probably not exhaustive, but I wanted to highlight at least that we are well connected to um, <clears throat> JavaScript and to Python. Uh, we are also connected to any kind of programming language uh, via Docker because you can uh, call a um, Docker container from IC, run whatever you want, and then uh, uh, import the results back into IC. You, we have a Docker uh, plugin for this. We have also some MATLAB plugins, some uh, site online uh, plugins. We have also some uh, good connection with image J1 and also uh, some uh, good compatibility with MicroManager. So um, this uh, leads me to the conclusion of the first part. Um, I showed you that the graphical user interface is unified, but we have only this one block of graphical user interface. And we also have a unified design of plugins. There is a large variety of plugins. I cited some of them. And we have these graphical programming options, uh, which, is, which is called the protocols. So. Um, First, I will ask the moderators if there is some uh, questions from the audience. You can uh, ask. Uh, you can use the Q and A uh, to ask some more. Stefan and Daniel, is there some questions uh, waiting for me, or did you answer everything already? There is some specific question that we are replying currently, but. Uh not really a uh, big question, I would say, so. Okay. If I may, there was an interesting, answer. yeah, there, there was an interesting question uh, asking how does it compare to cell profiler? This may not be uh, super easy to answer shortly, but maybe you want yes. to approach it. <laughs> uh, and, and the I'd... number one, Marion, that, yeah. that relate is how does it compare to image A and why you should use IC and not image A? Okay, so about cell profiler, I don't know cell profiler, so I cannot answer. Maybe one of you uh, could answer for, for this one. And for image A, fit J, um, I would say probably the main difference uh, is this uh, graphical programming feature, uh, these protocols that uh, makes life much easier when you don't know or don't know a lot about uh, programming because the, the, the learning curve of macro pro programming can be quite complicated and uh, you can achieve uh, things a bit faster, I think, with IC. So that would be, I think, the main difference for non, uh, first for non-experts, but also for bioimage analysis that needs to deliver um, some results to uh, non-programming uh, people. I will explain this a bit more into the second part, uh, this advantage of the protocols. I don't know if this fully answered the question. Maybe Stefan or Daniel have some things to add about the difference with uh, image FHJ. I think it's really depend what you want to do. Uh, CG can do some uh, analysis better than I see, depending what you are looking for. On the opposite, is is, uh, is true uh, as well. Uh, I think also if you have a 3D data set, uh, IC offer um, 3D visualization directly integrated in the software. Um, so um, if uh, you want to have a better uh, visualization tool directly accessible, maybe IC can be interesting for that too. But uh, I think it's really depend what you are looking for and what you need. It's always nice to try a bit of both the software and see uh, maybe for some kind of analysis, you can use one software and for other analysis, you can use IC. It's really dependent from what you are looking for. IC has some uh, main feature plugin, which you don't have in, in 3G, but um, so for example, the spot detector or the active contour are plugins that you one find in Fiji. So if you need that for your analysis, it's probably better to use IC, but uh, I know that the opposite can be so uh, as well. So it's different. And, and Marion, there was another question uh, that I, I'll try to generalize. 
yeah. about our uh, plugins from uh, IC available or can be run from Fiji? Uh, I think Stefan can answer better than me. You, there is, I think there is no direct compatibility because there is a, um, a, a layer uh, on top of the, the JavaScript code. Yes, so the, image, yeah. the image plugin IC. Um, in fact, you can install image plugin IC, but you will install it inside the EG folder of, Ima, uh, of IC. So it yeah. just... Uh, but the fact, opposite? But the opposite, no, it's not, uh, it's not possible. Yeah. yeah. So currently we have some compatibility with image J1 through this. Uh, we have a, a tab in the rib, uh, ribbon menu where you can uh, have the image. Uh, so you can also uh, install the image plugin, as uh, Stefan said, in this IJ uh, folder and then get them from there. But the data model is quite different. So you need to convert your data first and then execute your plugin and then go back to IC. And then you cannot directly use IC plugin into uh, Fiji. There is some, uh, that it needs a, a layer of uh, interpretation in between that does not exist. So, and yeah, for the moderators, I don't know if you know about cell profiler and could explain the difference between IC and cell profiler because I, I don't know cell profiler at all. Maybe Ofra or Rocco has no knowledge of cell profiler. Could if I can add a comment, so uh, cell profiler is based on module and you can write your own pipelines. I see um, is looking more like Fiji, but with a lot of uh, plugins that make it useful. So I think the kind of approach between the two are quite different. Okay, we don't hear you. Yeah, yeah, your your sound quality is not good. I I heard something like in Cell Profiler you can write your own pipeline, whereas uh, IC look more like Fiji. Yes, so in so, Cell Profiler you you can add the module, but this module um, have been written by somebody else. They can be the developers of the software, yeah. or if you have a capability, you can write your own module. But actually, what you do is try to integrate this module in a pipeline and execute this pipeline on a large batch of images. So yeah, what so you do is uh, test your image analysis uh, pipeline on uh, one or a few picture and after apply this in batch to other images. Mm. So actually IC is able to do that with the, the protocol feature. So I, I will um, detail more this feature uh, later in second part. So. I think this can help for the comparison with cell profiler. Is there any other question or should I move to the second part? There is yes, many new questions arising in the question and answer panel, but uh, I think we will try to tackle them. Uh, okay. This time. <laughs> so okay, because I need to take the exactly, to, you need to continue, to keep so, time. So, yeah. We will reply by, uh, by him. Uh, I have a second poll for you. Ofra, could you start the poll for, yeah, thank you. I wanted to have your opinion on the first part of this webinar and also have some idea about your knowledge about graphical programming and uh, protocols. So I mentioned them briefly into the, in the introduction. I wanted to know if this was new for you or not. And if you know at least one programming language or if you, are not familiar with programming languages. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Glad to see that it triggered your interest for IC. And yeah, most of you already heard about it, but never tried the, the protocols and graphical programming. And you have most of you basic knowledge of uh, programming language. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. So I'm moving to uh, the second part of my talk, uh, which is about the protocols. And I wanted to start with uh, some personal and introduce you to the biologist and to the bioimage analyst. So maybe this is familiar to you. Um, here, this biologist is in a, a, a difficult position because he 
has been analyzing everything by hand uh, so far, but now he has a super powerful microscopes and tons of images. And unfortunately, he needs to do this analysis really quickly. Um, I wrote to, for tomorrow, but you, usually it's more for yesterday, but well. Uh, he has some nice colleagues who gave him some code, but the problem is that he does not know how to program, or this is basically the case of most of you from what I, I read from the poll. And some of, uh, in his case, he cannot, he can't even read code, so he's completely stuck. And I'm now talking about another biologist. This one took a programming course one day, but he forgot everything or almost everything. This is something I hear also often. Um, and the second person, second person is a bioimage analyst. Uh, he needs to teach quantitative analysis to non-programmers, and he doesn't have so much time to uh, teach programming. So the 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 bottleneck is quite high uh, for him. He, this person uh, might also be on a microscopy platform or multitasking, and he hardly have, has time to make analysis for the others, and definitely he cannot concentrate several hours in a row. So I was discussing with a bioimage analyst once uh, on the platform who was saying, okay, I have 30 minutes to program, and then I need to run to a microscope, help some user, then I can go back to my desk. I don't remember where I, where I am. I have to start again, and et cetera. Doing the whole day is like this. And last part is, in some cases, bioimage analysts needs to deliver the, 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 the uh, bioimage analysis workflows to the users, and um, the users has no, um, has no programming knowledge. So you need to make a rough graphical interface where people can click. And this is way uh, too time consuming. The problem is that if he delivers codes to the user, then he has to assist them and explain them how to change the parameters and the user usually come back several times. So this is where I think graphical programming can be handy because it solves a lot of these kind of uh, issues. So before diving into the protocols, I would like to introduce you first uh, bioimage analysis and general um, most of you are probably already uh, familiar with the concepts, but I wanted to be sure that we're all on the same level. Um, you usually acquire images. You get these uh, images here, and then you do some processing, get some nice uh, data that you analyze, get some results. And what I call bioimage analysis is all these parts, so both the image for processing, but also the data analysis part. Usually this is an iterative process. You find some nice trends in the data. So you go back to image acquisition, do some more experiments, or you realize you did something wrong with the image processing, uh, or you missed some features, and then you go back to this step. So in lots of cases, you will have uh, lots of images, maybe not tons of them, but quite a, a few. And uh, these steps, um, will require you some uh, automated analysis. Here, uh, I chose some uh, data from my colleague, uh, Jessica Quintin. Uh, they are published on Zenodo. You can find them here. And uh, she came to the image analysis hub of the Pasteur Institute asking for some help on how to analyze these images. She had many of them, and she was interested in measuring the area and the mean fluorescence intensity of these objects. So the first step we have to do in bioimage analysis is to design a workflow. So here the workflow is to read the image, to segment the objects, and then measure their area and their fluorescence intensity, save the data. And then because there is several images, we will also loop on this and redo the operation in batch till we are done with the whole data set. So a bioimage analysis workflow is basically uh, the succession of these different steps, and each step corresponds to a component. Here, uh, the engineer from the image analysis hub uh, uh, designed a protocol in IC. This is, uh, the, we are going to use this protocol for the, the rest of the second part, and I will go into the different uh, parts of these protocols, explaining you how to make one similar to this one. And the final protocols look like this. So it probably looks a bit complicated at the first um, sight, 
but I will guide you through this. So first, uh, as we said, for this bioimage analysis workflow, we have several components. So we first read the image, then we, we, sorry, we segment the image, then we measure some features, so here the area and the fluorescent intensity, and then we save the data. And because this has to be done on many images, we uh, link to a folder and we do some batch analysis on all this. So um, I will first show you how to load an existing protocols. Uh, there is already more than 60 protocols on the IC website. Uh, I advise you to have a look at them because they can give you lots of ideas on how to get started. Uh, you can directly go to these protocols by clicking, clicking on this link. But the easiest way is actually to go through the search bar and type the name of the protocols or some keywords. I talked about the installed and online plugins. You also have online protocols. The one we are interested in is called self-fluorescence quantification. If you click on it, it will open the protocols uh, plugin and automatically display uh, the protocol. And then you can uh, get started from there. Second option, you get a protocol from a colleague or you download it from the internet. And then it's on a local repository. Then you go to the protocol uh, plugin in the ribbon menu, it's in the tools tab. And here uh, you open uh, the path for your protocol and here you can get started as well. So um, I will no, now get to the basics of the protocol. Um, as you see, the, the screen can quickly get uh, crowded. Um, so I will uh, briefly show you again one feature. Here at the end, I'm double clicking on the background uh, of uh, IC to make this panel disappear. And then later on, I'm also clicking on this a uh, little button here to make this uh, panel disappear as well. So the, you have more space for your, uh, to, to make your protocol. So I will start with uh, some very basics uh, concepts about protocols. First here, I'm moving what is called a block. This block is uh, not collapsed. Now I collapsed it with this button. I expand it again. And these two blocks were collapsed, so I expand it. So collapsing block is interesting to uh, make it more tidy and see better what's uh, going on. Each block has a title, so by uh, default, it's the title of the, the function it makes, but you can change it. And then it has a run button and a status. And here, the small numbers that you see are really important because uh, they define the, um, the order in which the steps will be executed for the process. Then you see the different variables. I will come back to their color uh, later. And the variables are linked between each other uh, with these links. And you just need to drag and drop to create a new link. So I'm coming back to the blocks. As I said, you can collapse them or remove them with this button. You can change the name. You can run them with this button. You can see their status, if they're ready to execute, if the block is done, or if there is an issue with the block. And as I say, the position of execution is important because it determines in which order the plugins, uh, the different blocks will be executed. Then here are the variables. There is three colors. The purple is for integer and decimals. Uh, this one is for images. And this uh, last one in, is for all the rest, so all the objects. I put some tips here for you. It's uh, important to collapse blocks to tidy space 
uh, in your protocol. I would also advise to start from almost the middle of the page because it quickly takes some space and you have to reorganize the blocks. Um, and the last point, I will show it in another video. If you're controlling, if you're clicking on control and click on a block, you select it and then you can move it around or copy it or cut it, uh, cut it or paste it. And this is really useful when you want to also tidy your workflow, rearrange blocks and everything. So here I am showing how to add a block. So I'm always starting from uh, this protocol that is already created. I want to add a block here for these variable uh, intensity classes. So the first method I show is to look into the repository of blocks and search for a block uh, to make an integer. I will uh, change its name to make it more uh, easy to understand to a uh, number of intensity classes and I copy the value, which is 10. Now I move uh, the blocks around to make some space. And I move the block here and then I connect it. Then in the second part of the video, I'm showing a second method to connect a block. I will do it with the frame. I control and click on it to select it. I copy and paste it. So it's duplicating the block. I unselect the first block and then I, I uh, change the title, change the value of this new block. I'm showing here that uh, before being linked, it's called, uh, it has the position 16. And then uh, after being linked, it's automatically uh, recognized as uh, the block number seven because uh, IC is reorganizing the order of execution of the block um, directly, uh, automatically when, when you connect blocks together. But you can also click on the number of the block to uh, change it as you wish. So now I will show you how you can run the protocol. So I, I showed already how to run blocks uh, separately, but here I want to run the whole protocol uh, with all the data. I just have to click on this run button here. And you see that all the status of all the blocks goes to green. I can do it again here. The status before were all to ready to be uh, executed. And now if I go slowly in the video, uh, maybe you can see here, you see that some blocks already got executed. So the first ones till block eight, Block nine is processing. This is this li little fender. And then the other blocks are waiting to be executed. Yeah. So uh, for the last part about the protocols, I'm going to go a bit more into detail. So this uh, might seem a bit an of an overkill for uh, uh, beginners, but uh, it's also to show you the options that exist and uh, either to um, encourage you to use them yourself or to go to colleagues and ask them to help you with this because these are nice options and this can be uh, really useful for your analysis. So the first one is actually easy and this is something that you will have to do often. You can do some batch processing you actually can select all the blocks here and embed them uh, to do some uh, batch processing. Here, this option is file batch. It will look into a folder and uh, do the same operation. So all these operations here on all the files into the folder. This is more complicated and this is why I was saying maybe this is a bit of an overkill for some of you. You can execute the protocol in headless mode. I wanted to show this to you because this can be useful when you really have a lot of data and you don't want to wait in front of your computer. Um, so for this here, we cannot directly use this variable as input variables because it belongs to a block with several variables. So this is why I'm creating this. And here, this is super important. 
sorry, something weird happened. Um, yes, I'm here exactly. Yes. So the most important part of the headless mode is that you have to add this ID to all the inputs and output variables because you need to, um, to tell the computer uh, which variables you want to uh, populate uh, in, your, in your command line. So here I'm adding the ID, uh, sorry, the ID input one. Yes. I select this and for this uh, workflow, I will only have one input variable and nothing else. I saved this workflow with a different name because now it's a different workflow. It's made specifically for the headless mode. And I will open the command line. So I'm on Windows, this is the command prompt. And then I show you the, the, the line. It's also on the, on the documentation online. You have to call uh, IC. So this ic.exe, and you have to specify do you want to go headless, and then you need to call the plugins uh, protocols, and then you need to call your own plugin. So protocol is equal to this path, which is headless.protocol. And then you have this input one variable here, which corresponds actually to the path to your data, so to your folder containing all the data. So you can execute this. And here it's going to take some time because it has to launch the process. And um, we are actually working on optimizing this at the moment. And now I'm uh, showing you the content of the folder and directly you see that the, the results uh, get processed and you get uh, the results table. So this is all you will see uh, on your computer. Uh, a few last words, this is a, a bit more general and this are really nice options. Uh, as I already said, you can rename a block you can also package blocks into a workflow block. I will explain you afterwards with a video what it means. And uh, this is one really good strength of the protocol is that you can ask, uh, add custom blocks uh, with JavaScript or Python scripts. So I mean Python. If you are still missing some uh, important components in your workflow. So this provides the whole flexibility you need uh, for designing uh, protocols. So I encourage you to use this workflow block, even if you're um, just starting, because it helps a lot to tidy your workflow. As I uh, showed first, this block corresponds to the segmentation component, so uh, this serial blocks, and I'm going to package them into a workflow block. So workflow block is empty. It can contain uh, it contains other blocks and then these blocks are connected uh, to the outside. So I selected with control and click all the block. I'm doing it again to move them all together. And now I'm going to connect this block to the outside because this is uh, now completely uh, uh, inside the workflow block. So I need to connect the sequence first to the image. Um, so I expose the variable by right clicking on the variable. And now I do the same for the list of rows. I want to connect them to the uh, binary operation fill holes. So again, I'm right clicking to expose, expose the variable and I'm connecting to the list of rows. And then I do the same for the extracted channel. I want to connect it to uh, the statistics to compute the mean fluorescence intensity. And then all my workflow block is connected to the outside. 
And the really interesting feature here, and I'm going to start the video on this to show you, is that you now have something much more compact, compact and tidy. So this helps a lot tidying uh, workflow and reducing it to uh, different components. And here, because I also need uh, the image, I'm finally redoing one connection here. Okay. So I really strongly encourage you to use this, to use the collapse option, et cetera. Um, to conclude on this, I want to uh, enhance some points about ethics and re reproducibility. I hope most of you are following the webinar tomorrow by Kota about ethics in image analysis, because this is a really, really important topic. First, the protocols allow you to be really, really transparent. Uh, all the steps of the workflow are visible, and also all the steps and the corresponding parameters are stored in the XML file of the protocol. So you can this, uh, use this to keep a, uh, a trace of what you did uh, in terms of analysis. And it's also re uh, helping you to make something reproducible because it's automated analysis. So the least you touch manually your images, the least you are uh, prone to make uh, errors and not be able afterwards to reproduce your analysis. Here, I would like to add some tips. Um, the images I uh, showed you and the protocol I showed you uh, are uh, on all on Zenodo with a DOI. So I encourage you to have a look at zenodo.org and uh, upload here test data or protocols. And I also encourage you to share your protocol on the IC website, add some documentation and link to test data. Uh, as long as your protocol is on the IC website, then users will be able to download it directly uh, from the search bar. And this is much more easier for users. And they will also be able to find it according to the keywords you put in the description. So to conclude on this part, uh, first, protocols allow to do some automation without programming knowledge. Uh, yet it is flexible because you can uh, add uh, some custom blocks with JavaScript or Jython. You can rename the blocks, uh, package them into these workflow blocks. So it offers uh, some more options than just connecting blocks together. And the last point, and this is really, really important, it uh, offers the possibility to, de to do reproducible and transparent analysis. So with this, I'm at the end of part two about the protocols. I would like to know if there is some pending questions, and then I will have a poll again for you. So Stefan and Daniel, is there some questions about the protocols? We try to reply as many questions that we could, but uh, okay. So um, so there is some question about the command line on the protocol, but I think you already replied this part uh, in the presentation. So this one is already done. And, um, looking for the other question. Ah, yeah, someone is asking. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, someone is asking me if you can share the link of the protocol that you show. Uh, it's in the slides. So the protocol I'm showing, you mean this? Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay. the, the protocol I'm using for the, for the, um, the demonstration is here. The link is here. Okay, okay, so I will just copy and paste the link to the... Yeah, to the, maybe you can put again the link to the slides because uh, it's, it's possible that some participants uh, did not see that link if they connected a bit later. Yeah, I think there are some pe other people asking for, for other examples, like if there are some example protocols out there, and actually there are, you can find them on the, on the IC website. Yes, so yeah. There are multiple protocols. Yeah, if exactly. you go to the protocol section, uh, so just bioimageanalysis.org slash protocols, then you will find plenty of examples. You can type uh, some keywords if you want to uh, see some more examples. Marion? Yes. Uh, people are asking if there are machine learning IC protocols. Uh, I don't think so. Stefan and Daniel, can you? Help me on this. 
I was reading yeah. a question. I didn't uh, understand the, the one from France. Uh, is there a machine learning protocols in IC? Uh, machine learning protocol, I don't think so. Let me see. Oh. No, no. Uh, like I don't currently so. there are no, no machine learning protocols, but however, I know there are pro there is a project that uh, tries to like integrate already created models to like to apply them on images. And okay. this is like an ongoing project, so it's not ready yet, but it's ongoing. Okay. <clears throat> and is there some plugins that can do machine learning or other like non -pro not non not protocols but other tools in IC? Not right now. Okay. But if I, for example, uh, yeah, so if for example, I have uh, in Fiji uh, something that run machine learning, can I call it from IC? Like uh, Stardust or DPMAJ? So, we never I'm sure tried. you can do it. Yeah, well, we never tried actually. That, uh, if you correctly install the plugin into the EJ folder from IC, uh, I think it could work, but uh, to be honest, we never tried, so I'm not sure. So if someone be, uh, be, uh, in the participant is trying, let us know. This is something we would be really interested. Um, we, we might also implement some tools in the future. We were discussing with Daniel Sage the possibility to have a deep IC that would be uh, the parallel of deep image A. So, um, yeah, I see that Ofra gave you the poll number three. I uh, wanted to have your uh, comments on the second part of the webinar, if it triggered your interest for protocols. And if you found graphical programming more easy than regular programming, I saw that you, most of you had basic knowledge of at least one programming language. So I hope you, you can compare with what I've shown here. Okay, so let's see the results. Great, I, I'm, I'm really happy that most of you uh, got interested into protocols. And yeah, I, I, I was curious to know if you found it uh, easier than regular programming. And I see that most of you found it e uh, easier than regular programming and the others uh, found it as difficult as regular programming. So it's, uh, it's good to know. So the last part of the talk is about the com community aspects. This is something we uh, not often mention in talks about uh, image analysis softwares and open source softwares, but this is something really, really important. As I said, uh, the origins of the projects are at the uh, Pasteur Institute, and we got uh, really important financial support from France Bioimaging. And all this uh, resulted in the publication of the paper in 2012, and this effort was uh, continued. But later on, more and more people joined this community and started making plugins and also protocols. And all this community effort le uh, led to what is IC now. And I want to emphasize the importance of the community here. IC would not be IC today if there was not this community. I'm going to uh, say a few words about the IC team. As I said, I'm part of the IC team in the bioimage analysis unit. We have some community involvement into maintaining the current version of IC, which is 2.0. We are also preparing the future of IC and thinking uh, mainly about how to uh, improve the kernel of IC. And we also are uh, involved into fostering the community dynamics. So um, uh, encouraging people to engage into the community, um, maintaining the website up to date and as tidy as possible and communicate around IC. And this community, community dynamic role is uh, particularly on my shoulders as I'm the uh, application specialist and community manager for IC. Among the other missions, I also wanted to uh, mention that the IC team recently started uh, IC services. So you might see this uh, tab on the website. 
And I just wanted to say that this is a commercial platform to provide services around IC for industrials and academic. So if you want to have more information, you can go online or you can ask us questions. So about the community, I mentioned the uh, different types of resources. So the plugins and the protocols, this is uh, among the code resources. I, um, I did not mention the scripts, but uh, there is also some scripts in the kernel. Don't forget that anyone can contribute to the kernel. Resources are also documentation. So the documentation that people make uh, for the plugins and for the protocols, but there is also some general documentations about how to make a protocol, for instance. And then there is some training material and uh, I'm uh, interested in starting a new category, which is called the blog post, where I would post some uh, use cases and invite people to share their use cases. So it's important to involve the community in all these activities because all these resources exist because of the community and will exist in the future because of the community. So most of the documentation is the documentations of plugins that were contributed or protocols that were contributed. So the first step to be involved into this community is to reuse existing resources and to cite and give credits when due. So I um, explained how to you how to cite the IC software by citing the publication from 2012, but I also encourage you to cite any plugin and protocol you're using. If they have a publication reference, cite it. If they don't, then cite the link, the website link uh, that you have. This is the minimum you can do to um, thank the people who contributed to this resource and share also this resource with uh, others. I would encourage you also to make comments on the existing re resources on the IC websites. You can put some, uh, you can raise the plugin with some uh, stars and you can put some comments if you found something interesting or if you would like some improvements. I'm also encouraging you to report the bugs or uh, problems with the documentations. Uh, you, you will see this bug report window when the plugin is crashing, but maybe you encounter some other behavior and then you can report it in the forums. I will explain you later how to, uh, how to, where to go for help. And uh, of course, the last category is uh, to submit new resources. I showed you uh, how to make a protocol and I encourage you to submit these protocols to the website of IC because it offers a centralized access for user it's easier to download and it's also gaining visibility for you. And uh, for the protocols and plugins, there is some associated documentation space so you can uh, fill it uh, with your own documentation and the keywords are really useful to search through uh, these uh, resources. And as I said, uh, you have direct access through the, research, uh, through the search bar. So, as I said, citing IC is really important. This is in scientific publication. Cite also the plugin that you are using. Cite the protocols that you are using. Even if you start from an ex in, if you, if you start from an existing protocol, cite this or, uh, original protocol and explain the modification you made. I also encourage you to publish your protocol, to upload it on the IC website, uh, add a sub snapshot in the supplementals of your paper, and also link to some test data so that people can test directly your protocol. Um, maybe some of you are on Twitter. Um, if you published recently a paper and you used IC, or you followed a course on IC, for instance, this webinar, if you have a favorite plugin or you want to show your last protocol, just share it, tweet about it. So I recommend to use the at IC underscore bioimaging uh, account to notify the IC team. So I'm the manager of the uh, IC team uh, of this IC bioimaging account and I will see it and I will retweet it and like it. Uh, use also the hashtag bioimage analysis if you want to be automatically retweeted by a Twitter board. So um, I uh, created this Twitter bot. This is for the whole bioimage analysis community. It's not restricted to IC and I encourage it, uh, you to use this hashtag so that we can create a community on uh, Twitter um, that is easy, easily uh, findable. 
And last point, follow the uh, IC accounts on Twitter if you want to get news from the IC team. Uh, last but not least, how to get help and uh, how to help the others. So if you're looking for help, I would advise you first to read the online documentations of the plugin and also go to the training materials that are on the website of IC. I would then advise you to search through the forum. So I'm uh, here uh, citing the forum image SC and we also have currently a forum on the image uh, bioimageanalysis.org website. If you're still looking for help and you could not find an answer to your questions in the documentation, uh, I would advise you to ask your questions in the forums. So at the moment, you can still ask questions on the IC website, but really, really soon we are going to join the Image SC officially as community partners. And then from Image SC will be the place to ask your question. I would like also to encourage you to help the others. So anybody can give help and there is no need to be an expert. I'm really sure you can answer some questions. So I encourage you to be active on the forums as a helper and not only as a person who is asking for help. So to conclude on the community part, and this will conclude almost the talk, I uh, encourage you to get involved into the IC community because IC would not be IC without this community. Uh, getting involved, start with communicating about the resources you're using, so citing them, tweeting about them. And this involvement is crucial if you want IC to stay uh, as it is in the future. Do you have questions about uh, the community part? Stefan and Daniel, is there some questions? Mm, I would say not much about this. Uh, okay. This, uh, app, but uh, I'm still in your prime impression about protocol and. Uh, okay. Your, but uh, about the community part, uh, yeah, there was just one question that you already replied about okay. the uh, SC forum. So yeah. I replied that we will uh, join the forum quite soon. Soon. Right. But you can already ask your question there. There is no problem. Just don't forget to use the IC tag. Yeah, that's good. And uh, I think, yeah, that was the That was it? Yeah. OK. So if that's it, I would like to move to the last poll of this session. So I'm interested in knowing uh, what uh, you will do next in the future uh, with this, uh, with IC. So I, I, I just forgot one option, which was just uh, at least try IC. Uh, and I suggest that you raise your hand uh, in the participant list if you, um, if you plan on trying IC, because I don't see this uh, in the in the question choice. So, okay, so most of you plan to go back to this presentation. I'm glad to see also that some of you uh, plan also to teach uh, how to use IC. I'm really happy about that. And also some of you plan also to help the others uh, or ask for help, which is uh, really uh, increasing the dynamic of the community. Um, yeah, so my last question, I'm sorry, I forgot to put it in the poll. Uh, if you uh, are planning to use IC, could you raise your hand in the, uh, so that I can see you in the list? Wow, I see the number increasing. So it's currently more than half of you. So, wow. So there is 313 participants and I see uh, I saw like a maximum of uh, 160 person raising their hands. Okay, good. Yeah, so more than 50% of you will try IC. That's good to know. Yeah, thank you.
Um, so with this, I'm at the end of my presentation. If you still have questions, I will have some time to answer this question. I just wanted to acknowledge uh, a couple of people. So first, uh, New Bias and the New Bias Academy for this uh, amazing project. I'm really proud to be part of it. I want to thank our moderators, so Julien, who has been behind the scenes since the beginning, Ofra, who is uh, also managing a lot uh, behind the scenes, Rocco, Stefan, and Danielle, who were checking all your questions and managing uh, all of you. I could not look into the Q&A. Uh, I saw it was really, really intense, so I'm curious to see how many questions were asked in the end. I'm also thanking the IC team and all the people who gave me this data. They, so the images I showed and protocols. I uh, encourage you to register to the Arbor and New Bias Academy at home events. The next one is tomorrow afternoon, so 3.30 p.m. Brussels time. Uh, Kota Mura is going to talk about ethics in image analysis. And I would like you to please uh, fill the satisfaction survey. This is really important for us to know how uh, you felt and how uh, the webinar uh, went for you. So with this, uh, thank you a lot for your attention. Thank you for staying till the end. And yes, uh, have a nice uh, end of the day and nice evening. If there is still some questions, Stefan and Daniel, I can answer them. <laughs>